Welcome everyone to the Consistently Okay podcast. My name is Luke and I'm here as always with Nick. Hello. And we are presenting you with a podcast centered around pop culture that we do our very best to make consistently okay for you. Each month we give you one episode where we talk about all things pop culture related and break down our thoughts and more on it. A second monthly episode will be our in-depth series and this season we're focusing on Batman. From films to animation where we'll take you on a journey through the highs and lows, ins and outs of the representation of Batman through the years. This week's sponsor comes from the Canned Air Podcast. Give them a like, a follow, and support fellow pop culture podcasts. Here they are to tell you more. Hey, this is Butch Patrick. That's right, Eddie Munster. Hello, this is Emily Swallow, the armorer from The Mandalorian. Hi, this is Neil Ross. Hey, this is Gates McFadden, and I'm listening to the Canned Air Podcast. You're listening to the Canned Air Podcast. And you are listening to the Canned Air Podcast. This is the way. Hello, everyone. I am Jeremy Colley. I'm Jack Doherty. And I'm Randy Hardenbrook. And we are the Canned Air Podcast, your tribute to comics and pop culture. And if you're looking for a comedy, comics, and pop culture podcast that features amazing guests like some of the ones you heard at the top of this commercial, then look no further than the Canned Air Podcast right here on the Evergreen Podcast Network. All right, so we're doing another in-depth episode. Uh, obviously featuring Batman and this time we're finally on the Christopher Nolan films and yeah. his first of his trilogy which is Batman Begins yes yes great great stuff we could probably just end the podcast now by saying a great film done yeah easy I feel like I feel like we could really agree on most of the Dark Knight trilogy potentially probably. I might I know there was curveballs. I know there was a bit in our past when we were at a bar once and I was really high on the Dark Knight Rises coming out and you were talking about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Uh, instantly knew then that we weren't ever going to be friends. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I'm so, so excited to re-watch the trilogy, although I've, I've seen it loads mm-hmm. in my uh, 35 years on this earth. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I, I love I love the Dark Knight trilogy and Batman Begins is up there. One of my favorite films of all time. Yes. Awesome. Did you ever, um, yes. did you ever play the video game? There was a tie in video game. I didn't know. It was good. Video game. It was, was surprising. It? Yeah. It wasn't like amazing. It wasn't like, I, arcing, kind of, but it, I feel like I remember seeing the graphics. I remember like a scarecrow, like classic old school gaming when he's like, you see him and then it camera pivots away and then he's yeah. running into the distance. I might have made that up, but that's something I feel like I've seen. <laughs> yeah, it, um, it was an enjoyable little game. I, uh, yeah, I was quite surprised by it. I remember having it on the original Xbox. Like, it's good. Little did I know that a few years later, they'd go, here's Arkham Asylum. Arkham, Arkham City, actually, at time of recording, came out 10 years ago to this very day. No way. God. Way, way. Such a good game, Nick. Amazing. I know so, we've already done a whole podcast on it, but yeah. damn if Arkham City isn't just the best. <laughs> superhero game in the land it's uh, yes. so Super good strong. so good um i'll probably watch the youtube video now the walk for the batman begins game it's probably nice. where i'm gonna go next so I, I don't know what it will look like now because this would have been like 2004 2005 could look really bad it'll look brilliant there'll be someone out there that's doing like a remastered version that's what mm-hmm. i've been watching a lot of recently someone's been doing like a banjo kazooie remastered i'm like it's pointless because it doesn't <laughs> exist really but here it is nice could really do. get out more um <laughs> So Batman Begins, obviously yes. a tiny bit of a background. It's obviously directed by Christopher Nolan, who took over after the epic, epic Joel Schumacher run films. That was that was what it was. Yeah. If you're interested to hear our thoughts on that, then you can find our in-depth episodes yep. going through Batman and Forever and Batman and Robin. Which, speaking of the Schumacher era, did you see that mm-hmm. Robert Pattinson, when he did his audition, was in the Val Kilmer suit? I, I didn't see it, but I heard. Is, yeah. that, is there footage of it? I don't think there's footage of it. I think there will be at some point, surely. Um, but I'm, I'm curious about that. You know? I mean, what he must have felt putting that suit on. So much power. Huge. Just, just knowing what that suit went through. Better suit than Batman and Robin. Well, it's pretty cool that it's the... Obviously, Val Kilmer in that, in that Batman film was against the Riddler, and so is... No, is that right? Batman Forever. That was the Riddler and Two Face, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, Forever's Riddler and Two Face. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't thought about that. The connection. Nice. There's the connection. Maybe that's what they were thinking. Probably not. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So it's um. 
it's directed by Christopher Nolan. That's what I was saying <laughs> yes. before I start thinking about Val Kilmer. <laughs> um, yeah, directed by Christopher Nolan. And it's um, obviously Warner Brothers decided, as we'll probably go into, they wanted to go to a different route to what the Joel Schumacher version was. Christopher Nolan stepped to the plate and was, at the time, a very hot director. He's so hot back now. Yeah. Um, and he, yeah, he started doing Batman Against, and it was written by David Goya, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And man, it, I mean, they've really scaled it back. This is the first film, superhero film anyway, that I can really think of that is actually quite grounded in terms of it's not a flashy superhero film. It's just like the stuff that happens. This is going to sound mental, but could could happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd say that. You know, it could be a yeah. guy who wants to destroy a city and yeah. there could be a guy who wants to stop that person destroying the city. Exactly. And he might be a multi-millionaire and be able to afford, you know, jumping gear. Yeah. And mm. such. Yeah. Just I feel like it. I feel like I'm not coming off very strongly in my knowledge <laughs> of um, or <laughs> expressing myself correctly. <laughs> coming across very um <laughs> just, like I don't really know what I'm gonna say next. But I do. I have a plan, Nick. Stick <laughs> with me. So it came out in 2005, which is now many years ago. I remember the hype for this. I remember being in America actually at the time and walking to Universal Studios. And the first time I saw the poster was there. And I thought, wow, there's wow. Batman. He's surrounded by a lot of bats. Yeah. That makes sense. Big poster. And, um, Big poster. and I, didn't, I didn't know much. I mean, I, I obviously I knew it was coming out and everything. I had seen some of the production photos, but that was the first image that I saw of it. I was like, that looks awesome. And I was talking to my older brother who was with me in America. And we said, you know what? We're definitely going to go and see that. Because not only is it Christopher Nolan, but Nolan? No Jesus land. Christ. On it. Nolan. <laughs> Ready. Uh, not, not only is it Christopher Nolan, but it's, um, it's Christian Bale. My, my yes. brother and I were big fans of his as well. And he wasn't that big at the time either. But he'd just done the but machinist. Just, yeah, I was going to say, was he also in Reign of Fire? Yeah, Reign of Fire and obviously then American Psycho, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah. And... Obviously, he was, he was super skinny at the machine. It's just an elf. Everyone knows the story that he had to pile on the weight to get the, get the role. Yeah. And he did well getting the role. So there were a lot of people that wanted it. There was um, a bunch of actors that went the role. So he got it. Christopher Nolan, Nolan liked Nolan. Christian Bale. Yeah. And yeah. And then it all kicked off. Do you remember the first time you heard about Batman Begins? Did you have any thoughts on it? Were you excited? You must have been pretty um... young, I guess. 2005. Yeah, I would have been what, fourteen? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember if I remember seeing a lot of hype. I remember a lot of hype for the Dark Knight. Yeah. Don't really remember the build up towards Batman Begins, other than like I just knew I was going to go see it. Um, and I saw it with my dad in the summer. Um, and I just remember like vividly watching it with just me and him. Can't remember why. It was probably the summer holidays got me out of the house. But um yeah, it I just remember watching it thinking like at the time that was really cool. Um and really enjoyed it. And since then I think I've I've appreciated it more. Like the more I've read Batman, the more I appreciate this film. Yeah. Um whereas with Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, I think it's gone the other way. Like, I'm really curious to watch them because I haven't watched them in so long. But I almost don't appreciate them as much, whereas I appreciate this more and more. Um, and I think part of it is just the tone and, and the style, which we'll get into. But, but yeah, leading up to it, I don't remember any kind of hype for it other than probably playing the video game. Which you loved. Yes, which I, I, I do just remember playing and being like, that is awesome. That and the Constantine game. They probably came out around the same time. I, I did remember the Constantine game. I did play that. That was good. That was good. We do a podcast just on the Constantine game. Yeah, yeah. that would be so <laughs> niche. I wonder how many so, people play that So game. many people will listen. <laughs> um, <laughs> be one of the extras one day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I, I, remember, I remember the casting as well. I remember Gary Oldman being cast and Michael Caine coming out as being cast and Liam Neeson being cast and Katie Holmes. I remember all this stuff coming out and obviously after i seen the post and i was i was really excited i was obviously i was older than you when it came out but i i loved i loved batman i was reading a lot of batman comics at the time and 
I knew at the time they were basing it or some of it at least off the Batman Year One comic and the Long Halloween as well was part of the the things that they were reading. So I, I was very excited and I mean, you didn't know much about it actually about the villains or anything. Oh, sorry, rather you knew a lot about it, but casting stuff, but not about the villains. Like you, you didn't really know um, who the main villain was. It wasn't yeah. um, it wasn't really spoken about much other than it was teased that Ra's al Ghul was in it because of the the actor that was playing um well no one's gonna see this but you know spoilers fake Raz al Ghul yeah and that they just said Dr. Crane was in it but again you have all these you have characters in films now that pop up for five minutes and they're just in it for I mean, those five minutes. Crane was in Batman and Robin. So Crane was in Batman and Robin, yes. You know, there's your proof. They can just and pop up. Was wait, was he in Batman and Robin? Yeah, Coolio. In the Coolio, yeah, of course, yeah. Oh, strong. Damn it. So good. I forgot, I forgot all about Coolio. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. Why Christopher Nolan didn't bring him in, I have no idea. I know. Which, actually, so, um, speaking of, in the meantime, before we got to Batman Begins, obviously there was Batman Unchained, which was going to be made, didn't, uh-huh. um, which is a travesty because it would have been amazing. Um, and then, didn't you also have? Darren Aronofsky try and make a Batman film. Yes, yeah, so I think originally when Aaron Aronofsky was going to make one, that's when Christian Bale was originally linked. Okay. He was, inter- he was interested in it, but then that project died. Yeah. And then he found out that Christopher Nolan was doing one. There was something that I read a while ago about it, which was Christian Bale said he would only, he would only do a Batman film if because he, he basically said that all the other Batman films have been more about the villains, which is pretty true. Yeah. And especially in something like Batman Returns, where it works really well, which we both said in our other podcasts as well, with Catwoman and Penguin, they're great villains. And obviously Joker is a massive thing in Batman 89. And I think he's right in that because he said he wants to be able to explore both Bruce Wayne and Batman, and that be the, the main focus. Yeah. And... And that's why I think Christopher Nolan probably thought, yeah, he's he knows what we are looking for, and that's what we're going to go for. Is well. obviously he did a good job probably in his uh, his the casting process, but it's yeah. it's interesting as an actor that's he's he's already seen the other films and he's realised that those were didn't feel like Bruce Wayne Batman films, it felt like the villains were the key features. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is interesting straight away, and it obviously it's called Batman Begins, isn't it? So in the other films, he's already established as Batman. Like Michael Keaton's Batman is already Batman, and thinks yeah. that this is the first time we see really an origin story that isn't just his parents being shot outside yeah. the theater. Although we do see that again, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think that covers everything. I think it does. I think that's the setup. It's yeah. ready. So, what do you think about the opening of Batman Begins? Because I'm not a fan of the kid actor; it drives me nuts every time I see him. <laughs> okay. um, but I do love. The why do we fall line? I think that's fantastic. Yes, um, that has seeped its way into pop culture as well. That is like it's there a lot. Has to, but I can't remember it. Does it follow all the way through the trilogy? I feel like it should. Like I feel, I feel like Michael Caine might say it in Dark Knight Rises when he's crying. No, no, because when he's crying, doesn't he just say I've failed you? Isn't that the? I can't remember. We'll find out as we go through this, I guess. We'll find out. But I just think it's such a good line. That yeah, I should. wish, I hope it does carry on throughout. I, I mean, I haven't seen Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises for a while either, although yeah. the Dark Knight at least once a year. But Because nice. um, cause Rises, the link that he says to Gordon is about putting the jacket on. Yes. So that is the going back That's to Batman again, yeah. Their link, yeah. Um, but I don't know if it does. It should, because it is a great line. Great line. Um, it's a good opening as well. I think it, there's a lot of people that yeah. say about the obviously it's um people do it different, like Zack Snyder diff- did it differently with Bruce Wayne's parents and things. He did just slow mo opening credits bit and everything like that. But I think it's quite a good app. It's probably the best one. It's definitely the one that's got the most to it with the Thomas and Martha Wayne's death because yeah, it's quite quite a big chunk. I was surprised that it was that was quite a lot in it because like, yeah. But when he falls down into the what would eventually be the bat cave, and the bats come around him, and you know, Thomas Wayne saving, then going through the house, and then you also get the theatre bits as well. So it's 
there's quite a lot there quite a lot yeah. of meat i um twist. one of my notes was that um the character rachel isn't in any of the comics is she no so she was she so originally it was going to be um it was going to be harvey dent harvey dent was going to be mm. bruce wayne's best friend but then they didn't feel they could do harvey dent justice in batman begins so they made up another mm-hmm. character mm. yeah because because i thought it's bold that you're set up for this first new version of batman is to a introduce a new character that's like not part of the law but b give him the love interest right off the bat yeah that there's clearly something between him and rachel um but yeah i thought that was cool i thought the opening where he's in prison is really cool um, i love the prison scene i love yeah. like he's almost obviously at that point you don't know how he got from the theater to prison yeah yeah um or do you no you do no you don't you sort of like see it as it goes so it's like the the setup is him in prison um because he wakes oh, up oh yeah yeah that is it yeah thing and then you yep. slowly start to see it but the, the line where the guy attacks him and he's like you're not the devil you'll practice i think that's an awesome line um it's it's similar to the one that we've just seen from the batman where he's like i'm vengeance it's, it's that kind of like level of like shit yeah um it's a good yeah. fight as well when the, when the police officer is taking him away for protection he's like i don't need protection but not for you for them yeah and they're all like eh. yeah like that um, yeah yeah i thought that was really nice um and done really really well um and yeah i like what they do with thomas wayne as well i think Again, it's 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 bold to have Thomas Wayne such a character in, um, and I, I think it's interesting that they decide to almost have him be. Um, in this story, anyway, he's almost like the center of Bruce. He is like the morality of Bruce, and, um, it, like his ideals, where he talks about Gotham when they're on the train, talking about like how he visions Gotham and stuff. I think that is like your central theme of bruce going through this this film i think it's a shame that you lose that later on as well like i don't remember that being in dark knight dark knight rises i could be wrong but that no. sort of like center seems to go and I, I think that's a shame because it's a really nice thing to kind of see in him well, um, i think it's, it's quite rare that you actually see thomas wayne portrayed in such a good light as well yeah there's always cobwebs that come out about him and yeah, he was trying to be good for the city, but in this, that train scene especially, he's, like you said, he's almost, he's saying that Gotham is is bad, but it could be good. Yeah. And that they're working hard to fix it and make it a better place. And obviously his death, because he's instilled that in Bruce Wayne, it, it, you know, slowly puts him on his journey, doesn't it? Because, yeah, yeah, he's, he wants to, he wants to finish what his father started, not being the vigilante because he's trying to do it with his money and his wealth and everything but bruce wayne is like yeah, it's a lot of darkness as well so he's yeah. a bit of fight yeah i really like as well that after their shot um like the last thing he says to bruce is don't be afraid i really i think that's quite poignant um yeah so there is there is quite a lot to unpack already yeah. in the beginning like so that's that's what i mean by the opening scene because it doesn't it's the same with the spider-man stuff isn't it with the origin with the uncle ben stuff yes it's been done a number of times but this Batman Begins one feels like it was the first time we actually saw a, like a huge backstory to his parents. Yeah, yeah. So it would be, be really how they do it in, in the Batman. I think he's I think he's supposed to be a couple of years in, isn't he, as Batman by this yeah. point? But yeah, I think he's it's hard to go. Curious if they even mention it or if they go the sort of Tom Holland. Yeah. So uh, with Tom Holland, I think it's one line possibly where he alludes to the fact that he's lost someone maybe okay um i can't remember i can't remember but i feel like in civil war there is where he, when he's talking to tony there might be a line about losing someone um all right okay. but i think that really like lacks i think i think not having uncle ben in in his life is is a weight that they miss and i i think with this version of um like Bale's Batman in particular, I think needs the weight of his parents' death. And it, yeah, I think so as well. 
I think moving forward, that's the thing that Batman, if you want to take a dark and gritty approach, I think that's what he needs. Um, yeah. Like, you know, like I absolutely love how he's done in Batman vs. Superman because um, they go for the line of like, where he, when he's like beating the shit out of Superman, he says, you know, my parents taught me a different lesson that dying in the gutter for no reason. Um, it, it adds that kind of like the the kind of not corrupt side to Batman, but the the damage side. Um, and I think without that, the character becomes a little less um, to like less interesting to me. Yep. I always like the Batman toes a line between like how far will he go? Um, because he's a guy who has a lot of rage because he is he is a vigilante. Like Batman is a vigilante. He's he's technically a criminal. Um he just has a heroic center. Moral um, compass. Yeah. And his villains are the ones who test that compass. Um, yeah. And I think that's what they do really well with Batman Begins is that they set that version of Batman up. Is that they say, like, everything that's been with Batman before, it's not like throw it out the window, but it's sort of like, this is going to be a completely different version because of that moral compass. Um, yeah. So yeah, so the opening I think is is really strong because it just gives you the world. It's like here's the world that he's inhabiting, and here's the style of, of Bruce that they're going for. Uh, they pack a lot in quite early on because mm-hmm. you have everything at the beginning. So him falling down the well and the bats, so he gets to fear a bat. You've got the love interest of Rachel, not love interest. Uh, the link between him and Rachel. And you've got the situation on the train where her dad's talked to him about everything he wants to fix about Gotham and how it can thrive. And then you've got Rachel taking him underground when he's older and he's, he's tried to kill a person, uh, Joe Chill, and uh, the person that tried to kill or did kill his parents, but he gets killed before Bruce can actually do something, which is also well done as well because you don't want Bruce to break yeah. what will eventually be his rule, even though he doesn't know he has a rule at that point. But again, it would be a horrible thing for him to kill someone and then decide that he doesn't want to kill anyone. So yeah. That's also good because that sort of sets that emotion as well. Like, you know, he's never going to kill anyone or you hope he won't. So that's good. And then it packs all of that in before he jumps on the boat. Yeah. Even though you've already seen him, you've seen him fighting in the prison. But I, I just thought that that's sort of the first 20 minutes of the film. So yeah. they cover a lot of ground very, very neatly and well. And yeah. it really establishes Bruce Wayne as, as you were saying, this just just what kind of Batman he's going to be, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that it doesn't feel rushed. Um, they cover a lot of, like, comic ground as well. Um, like you can see a lot of the references and a lot of the kind of visual aesthetics are there. Um, I love that they do Joe Chill. Um, yeah. Like, I, I'm always, I, I said this on Batman 89, I'm always gutted that it, they chose Joker to be the one that killed the parents because it just feels a little bit Hollywood. Um, and even in something like The Joker, um, you don't necessarily know if that's Joe Chill or whether it's just somebody in a Joker mask. Like that's done nicely because it all ties in, but I just I always like having Joe Chill as the character that he's um he's not a super villain, he's just a, an everyday criminal. And yep. he, he made a decision. Um and he basically sets uh, that kid off onto the path the path to be like the best vigilante. Yeah. Ever. Um, yeah. and then I also absolutely love uh, Bruce's conversation with Falcone the first time like Tom Wilson as Falcone I think is great yeah. um, he barked barked like a dog yeah like I really like how um, he's like subtly a piece of shit yeah he is um, yeah like I just feel like he's a really interesting character and he's not necessarily in it to take over the world he's just in it to be like a really powerful figure in gotham yeah um and i really like that take of falcone that he's just like i want to be able to you know like kill somebody in a bar and then not even question um I, even I, that as well that scene there they established that the police in gotham are absolutely shit as well yeah police judges like they established like this is how how far how low gotham is yeah like, at the moment yeah, and g- going off of that, like this is sort of touching on to visual representation here, but I absolutely love 
but in that first 30 minutes you get a sense of gotham uh-huh. um like i i love gotham in tim burton stuff because it feels gothic and it feels right but and i, I said at the time there's times where it feels very exaggerated like it works but it is very like that's tim burton um this version of gotham feels like a it could be a real city but b it just feels correct to the comics it feels gothic but real it feels atmospheric it feels like it's a city that at any minute can tear itself apart because there's so much wealth and there's so much poverty and i think it's done really well that's something that then when we get into dark knight and dark knight rises i'm curious to see if my opinion is still the same but i'm i'm always really disappointed with those because they lose that it goes from being like it it definitely does in dark knight rises but i think you'll be surprised with dark knight because i think okay. it, i feel i i feel like that is similar to batman begins in terms of of like, that yeah it's just like i think gotham looks really good and especially in the opening scenes in dark knight i think it looks really like grand and also okay. shit at the same time with the poverty stuff so yeah but it's just... nice because obviously the, the difference in the sorry i'm interrupting no, the for... difference between burton and schumacher's which was like you know painted backdrops and you know they made it look like a crazy colorful gotham and things especially in schumacher's but this is obviously these shot on like these big i think it's like london chicago new york i think okay. so he's used these big uh these big places to make it yeah. look like gotham as well so and it works really well in these films yeah because that's just in my head i just have a memory of dark knight feeling like it's just chicago or pittsburgh it just doesn't feel like gotham whereas in batman begins i just i don't know if it's the narrows whether it's the inclusion of that or what but it just it has the every time i watch it i just feel like i'm like that is correct to batman that feels like gotham um i think it feels like a bit like a game it's like the arkham games you could say yeah. like you like goth uh, batman begins feels like it's they had a small map to work with yeah. Like you have a bit of Gotham and the Narrows, and obviously you've got these other locations, but where it matters, it's in Gotham. Yeah. And then the Dark Knight, like you said, it does feel very like it's Chicago, isn't it? Where they do the bank robbing scene and everything, yeah. and it's then everything's a bit of a bigger scale. And obviously, Dark Knight Rises is just mental. I mean, yeah. it feels like Gotham is endless. Like you've got yeah, the yeah. stadium and the bridges and everything. So they just jump up. And I think that's why Batman Against probably feels like a really nice. Or a good Gotham because it, I think the narrows and you've got Arkham Asylum and everything, it just feels a bit more contained. Yeah, it feels, yeah, it just feels a little bit more um, like it's just pulled from the comics. In the same way that, like, having just watched the Batman trailer, like, that trailer to me is like, that's Gotham. Um, yeah. Like, they've, they've done really well to capture that. Um, especially after having Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, where they were less leaning on like Gotham as an aesthetic. Um, but yeah, so I absolutely love Gotham in this one. I also think the shot of um, him in Crime Alley with his parents, I don't know if it is Crime Alley in this one, but it's just... Yeah, I think, it must, I think it is Crime Alley. It's, it's the back of the theatre, isn't it? Or side yeah. of the theatre, rather. Yeah. Um, I really like that shot because that looks like it's pulled from the comics. Um, like the shot where he's just lying there was folks i think they did well there um again it feels like year one it's it's got that kind of like sensibility to it visually um but yeah just the early things that i picked up on visual there Um, yeah what do you think about i know we'll we'll dive around things but what do you think about casting overall like so christian bale as batman you are you a fan of that casting um He's fine. Like, I don't love him. I, I think his Bruce is the thing that lets me down. I don't think he does a good Bruce Wayne. Um, and I don't like the voice. Um, I, I think, actually I, think it the other way. I'm actually the other way around. I actually think he does a good job as Bruce, but I'm not a good not as I'm not a huge fan of his Batman. Yeah. It's at the time, I thought the voice was fine. And then when Affleck came along with his modulated thing, I was like, oh, that's much better. better. And now with Pattinson doing his like full modulation, I think that works 
so much better because it just makes sense. Like it's like, well, obviously he would have that. Um, I think it's funny with his Batman because obviously there's so many parodies of it now. Yeah. Uh, like the where are the drugs going and stuff, but you can't help but watch because his cowl is quite tight on his face as well as mask. Like his, his cheeks pop out just a yeah. little bit, and then this is probably what you're going to use as the <laughs> clip, I guess. But it's like, uh, yeah. and it's so uh, it just at the time they probably thought we're nailing this, and I think when I first saw it, I was like, nice. Yeah. But like you said, because of what's come after it, it's kind of when you watch it again, out like, man, that just. Yeah, it's so strange because he's yeah. it's almost like you can see the saliva coming out of his mouth as well when he's shouting. Yeah, but I don't know. It's it's. I still like. I like him as. I do like him as Batman as well. I think he's a good Batman. I think his his build is good. I think he looks good in the suit as well. I think you know he's. I think he's a good. I think Christian Bale plays a good Batman, but I just think his Bruce Wayne is much better than his Batman. And that when I watch it back now, I think like it could have been done a bit differently. Um, I think. Yeah, like I, I'm pretty sure I think I, I've always felt like his Bruce is best in Batman Begins, and then as it goes on, I think he loses the sense of it. Um, whether that's... I think it's strong in Dark Knight as well. I think okay. again, when you watch, I would like in the like in the hotel scene in his in his hotel scene when Joker walks in and he's you know he's doing all the he's talking to Rachel Dawes and stuff and he has the knife against the throat. Like those scenes, I think he's actually pretty strong in, and also. Some of the emotional scenes, but it, it definitely loses both of them, I think, in Dark Knight Rises. I think yeah. they're both like yeah, we'll get to Dark Knight Rises. Cause I do, I do actually I do really like Dark Knight Rises well, so I'm not gonna slander it now, but it definitely loses it definitely suffers from the sort of Spider-Man three Dark Knight Rises, where it kind of well, actually Classic. it's wrong to put it on the same thing as Spider-Man three, but just right. they try and do too much. Yeah. And it yeah, just yeah. goes on too long, and yeah. it's a bit of a bit of a mess. I think so, um, some of it is really good, though. Yes, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Um, yeah, uh, I think Killian Murphy is awesome as Crane Scarecrow. Yes, um, again, like, he he went for the Batman role, didn't he? he went for the Bruce Wayne yeah. role, and he got the yes. Scarecrow. Role. He's perfect casting for Scarecrow, and I love the fact he's in all three. Yeah. He's just awesome. Like he always delivers a really good performance, and he does. Um, I just I love some of his mannerisms in this. He's, he's he does the whole kind of like confident doctor really well, mixed with the the sort of like crazy. Um, I've lost it kind of thing. Yeah, I um, love the fact that he got a mask as well. It wasn't like didn't have a full. I know there was the bit when they're hallucinating. He has like the red eyes and stuff, but I like the fact that his mask, he has a mask with the toxin spray under his wrist because it's so simple. Yeah. But you know that oh, that's the scarecrow. And because they're keeping it so grounded, they couldn't do the whole like, oh, he's got straw coming out of his costume, yeah. and, which yeah. they would have done in Schumacher's version if they ever got Coolio in that costume. Would have been sick. But, you know, they keep everything quite low key. And I think that's, you know, why Raz Al Ghul works. And I think why Scarecrow works and all the villains, like even Joker is grounded in a way, isn't it? It's just insane. Yeah. But, I thought he was good, and I thought Gary Oldman as Commissioner Gordon was great. Even though Amazing. again, he went for um, he went for, he was going to be cast as Alfred originally. Oh, intriguing! I didn't know that. He was going to be, he was going to be Chris. Someone was it Chris Cooper originally was going to be, he was going to be Commissioner Gordon. Intriguing. And then Gary Oldman was going to be Alfred. I think, but then Chris Cooper dropped out to be with his family. So then Christopher Nolan shifted Gary Oldman to be a commissioner because he always plays a villain normally. So they thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice for him to play a sympathetic character? Yeah. So he knocked out part. And then Michael Caine got the Alfred role, which I'm pretty sure was also just given to him. So it's yeah. Michael Caine. Michael Caine, yeah. Uh, which is also great. He's a great Alfred. He's yeah, he really good. really well. Um, Alfred's a pretty coveted role, though, isn't it now? Like, you think with the people doing it, it's like a, it's a pretty big role. Obviously, it yeah. was held by um, that old guy. Michael Gore. Go for ages, Goff. yeah. Goff. And then see, you got Kane, and then you had Jeremy Irons. Irons did a great job, he was really yeah, strong in the uh, Scott's not Zack Snyder ones. And then yeah. now it's Andy Serkis, isn't it? So, yeah, intriguing. I'm really curious about his, his Alfred. Um, yeah. yeah, really like that. Um, I think Oldman and Kane are like the two that throughout the whole trilogy I think really hold it, like they're just consistently always like delivering a really good performance like them and scarecrow but like scarecrow's 
sort of cameos throughout. But um, they get big roles, though, don't they? And that that comes back to the whole. It, it needs to be centered around Bruce Wayne and yeah. Batman because they're they're big roles. Like mm-hmm. Commissioner Gordon is a huge part of Batman's story, and so is Alfred. So obviously, you get you get more and more of them. Then you know, Michael Caine's Alfred isn't just there to say a quirky one liner every now and again, or just you know go and get the bat suit ready. He's you know, he's active. He's a proper proper role in it. So, yeah. So um, they're. they're I mean, I, really, I think I like all the casting of Batman again, so I think the only one that doesn't really hit home for me, and it's not like, it was, it's not even that bad. She doesn't play the role terribly, and I don't think Maggie Ginnell did it. I think it's maybe it's because she's not uh, in the Batman comics. Yeah, so it's hard maybe to have like, a point of comparison. It's hard like. to have a point of comparison, yeah, whereas everyone, these characters have been played by someone else or they're in the comics, but that character just didn't really hit home for me, but she did. did well. If anything, I actually... I wish she had kept the role, actually. I think I probably would have preferred Katie Holmes in... Oh, I would like to see it through. Yeah, I'd agree. To getting, to getting killed off. Um, yeah. So yeah, curious. Um, just, it just wasn't the... I don't know. It just feels like a bit of a random name as well to be cast. And I'm, don't get me wrong. I think everyone was sort of like, Heath Ledger is going to be the Joker. And we all probably like... Probably the same with Rob Patterson now as Batman. You know, yeah. people are thinking it's a bit of an odd choice, but... Most of the time it all shocks us. So yeah. in a good way. Um we've also got Hans Zimmer taking over score duties. We do. He does a good job, didn't he? Smashing. Just, isn't it two people doing uh, composing on this? Isn't it um oh, I don't know. I think it's two people. I think I think I remember one person does the composing for Batman and one person does composing for Bruce Wayne. Let me find out. Or am I thinking of um, am I thinking of that in the Dark Knight? Because Hans Zimmer does all three. Doesn't oh yeah, it? so there's yeah there is there's James Newton Howard and then there's Hans Zimmer. Yeah. I didn't know that. I always just thought it was Hans Zimmer. I don't um, know how much the other guy was in it. I just again I remember reading it a while ago. Yeah, but I, I didn't. I couldn't remember if it was this or Dark Knight. Because I think Dark Knight is just Hans Zimmer. I can't remember. It must be. It must be if that's the case. Again, I could be really wrong here, but um we didn't talk about Liam Neeson as well while you're looking at up. He's he's a good casting as well. Obviously, everyone knows what happens at Batman against, I think. So we all know he's Raz Al Ghul, really. But yeah, I think he plays the role. And again, it's casting interesting because they again he always plays a nice character. So they switched his dynamic around as well because they didn't want you to believe he could be a villain. So they wanted yeah. it to be a twist at the end. Yeah. But I don't think um, I can't remember what I thought during the, when I first saw it. I think I'm. I think I don't think I was really thinking. Oh yeah, he's going to be Raz Al Ghul. Yeah. Because um, I Look think at, at that point I thought it's going to be Scarecrow. He's going to be the main villain. Yeah. But Looking back he, on it though, it's really obvious because of his mustache. It's super thing. Yeah, it's super obvious now. Like, yeah. But at the time, I just didn't even think of it. I was like, oh, that was cool that, that Raz was either. in it and the League of Shadows were in it. I thought it was a really cool idea. And then when he rocks up he, at the end, I was like, oh. I thought he holds himself really well as well. I think he looks the suits and everything and his you know, posture. And I think he just plays the role really well. And the bit when they're burning down the house and everything, and he, he generally believe that he believes in his cause as well. Yeah. The only thing that the only thing I don't like, and this is going into the story bit now, mm-hmm. is that I hate I hate the weapon of choice that he has. I hate that it's like uh what is it? Like a gas, like he wants to basically send everyone crazy like I, just oh, think right. it's, okay. I hate the fact I think, that they're going to put it on a train and the train is going to go into wayne tower it just feels like such right. a like a friday night villain kind of plot okay i don't know i don't know if that makes any sense it just when i watched it again i just thought oh, so lame raz al ghul like <laughs> just do something else i'm to good old bombs uh, yeah sounds really bad <laughs> No, I mean you bombs. do get there technically with Bane later on. You get the, yeah, you do, yeah. the, the big ah, one. Good. You get your the bomb new... fix. Yeah. Um I, I don't know, it just felt it just felt I mean, I guess that is I mean it's, it's probably stupid say that so based on a comic and obviously they always used to gas things and blow things up and everything. It just I don't know, it just didn't quite fit his character. I kind of okay. wish it was I don't know what I wish, but it just didn't when I watched it again, I just thought no, not for me. Curious. Um, but I do I do love I do love the scene when they're in the, their training and he's 
he's like getting Bruce to face his fears and then Bruce cuts one of the ninja's arms. Raz yeah. Ghul then turns him around and goes to get him by the throat and then it's not it's not Bruce, it's someone else. Bruce yeah. outsmarted him. It's like, did it. Nailed it, Bruce. Yeah. Uh, I love yeah. that scene as well. It's really smart. Yeah, I think that's done really well. Um, just by the by, James Newton Howard did work on The Dark Knight. So, did he? Yeah, he didn't work on Rises though. So Howard. I don't know why. Um, guy hates bombs. Yeah, obviously, yeah. He's like, there's a bomb in this? No. Done. Um, yeah, I think the whole League of Shadows is set up really cool. Um, that works really wide, nice. Again, some really nice shots there as well, like cinematography-wise, sort of capturing, um, I think it was Iceland that they did. Um, yeah, Iceland, yeah. That looks really nice. Um, just really... You've sort of got accustomed to them now, but they're it's like some of the like earlier Nolan stuff where it's like establishing like a really big um like distance shot. Um I think that looks really, really cool. And yeah, oh, so the, the Razor Ghoul setup is just really nice. Um, one thing I like about Razor Ghoul as well is that that's obviously we're not sure about the line, why do we fall Bruce? Or why do we fall? We didn't say Bruce every time, but is that Razor Ghoul is like consistent as well, almost like another father figure. Yep. Bruce because he's he's in Dark Knight Rises as well, and that's obviously a huge part of the twist in Dark Knight Rises. But it's um it's nice that it's throughout that journey, which obviously there's years in between begins and Dark Knight, and then there's some years between Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises that Raz Ogle still A plays a role in his life mentally. Um but obviously his you know his daughter's involved as well. And I yep. I wonder how early on they Christopher Nolan and and David Goyle thought right this is we have we have the trilogy like this is where it's going to start with it was just like yeah this is just a one-off with Liam Neeson but yeah I just thought um I think like you said with Alfred and Mr. Gordon as well that it feels like um it feels like they all play their role so well and it's why the trilogy works even yeah, though yeah. Dark Knight Rises had its failings like there's a consistency between the cast and the storytelling which is quite rare in a in a trilogy Mm -hmm. I think yeah there's definitely an arc and um, one of the things I noted on this which could be a controversial thing to say but again I haven't seen Dark Knight in years so I could be wrong here in my assumption but one of the things that I I was picking up on is that a lot of folks always credit the Dark Knight for um, crafting like a serious superhero film and like grounding superheroes but I actually think that Batman Begins does all the work there. I think Dark Knight yep. just um, adds to it. But I think Batman Begins is like, that's the one way you, like, they did it. Like, they grounded everything. They, they figured out the way of making a superhero thing serious. Um, it was just that Dark Knight was on a bigger... Um, scale. Scale, yeah. Um, so I, I always think that Begins should get more credit than it does um i feel like it's always like the dark knight is the one that stands out but i think begins just sets everything up so so well um, well you I mean you could take you could take if you think about like the grounding prospect then you hear about the comments from is it scorsese this is about superhero films and stuff not being cinema so yeah then, you take a director like christopher Nolan, like you could attach christopher Nolan to any marvel film and you would feel like the disney the Disney nuts would run through. You know, you look at someone like Guy Ritchie doing Aladdin. Yeah. Like, bizarre. It's mental. But what Christopher Nolan did is he got asked to do a super film, but he made it grounded and he made it his own. Yeah. And I think it really did set a tone that was, was awesome because, I mean, even after that, actually, there hasn't been a lot of directors that have done what Christopher Nolan's done. Mm-hmm. I think Zack Snyder, in a very difficult way, because with, it was with Superman. He got quite close with Man of Steel, obviously. Yeah. That, that somehow feels pretty grounded. Yeah. Even though it starts on Krypton. Yes. And, um, you know, it's basically about aliens, but somehow he makes Clark Kent feel more grounded than, you know, most any people in the Marvel films. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see more of that sort of thing as well, what Christopher Nolan did with Batman, and especially something like Batman Begins. I'd love to see a more scaled-back version of some people. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see it with the Batman. Like, 
it looks yeah i think so i mean the interesting thing about the batman is that it's again if if they're going there the matt reeves is like right i want to take what christopher Nolan did and a little bit of what maybe a little bit of something like Zack snyder but our in is that it's going to be about it's going to be about being a detective yeah which Bale's Batman does often. He actually uses like when they're trying to crack the bullets in the Dark Knight and everything like yeah. this that. But it's such a small amount. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so small. He focuses more on technology, like Lucius Fox's yeah. technology, than actually doing the detective work. Yeah, he's not. You know, he's not a detective. Whereas it's coming across that. You know, Patterson's Batman is going to be trying to, obviously, because he's trying to catch the Riddler, which is the perfect villain to start mm. this off. I mean, imagine if they did something like Riddler and then they ended up with, I don't know, could go one or two ways, like another villain that's on the, you know, he's not quite super powered. Freeze. freeze. Yeah, freeze or something. Yeah, freeze or something, but a scale, a more scale back freeze and then ending with the Joker. Yeah. Because they always do the Joker so early on, don't they? Or they did, yeah. they did in Batman 89 and then they did it in Dark Knight. It was in the yeah. second film. Obviously, everybody's daydreaming that would be the whacking Phoenix Joker, but yeah, I don't see it. Right. No. Part of me wonders whether with that they'll actually just not do Joker. Like whether they're just going to go look like Batman's Rogue Gallery is so it's big. Like, it's, too, it's too. I just can't see it being skipped. Yeah, unless unless they do a Joker two, well, which I think would be a, would be a huge risk. Even though I know they're talking yeah. about it, but I just can't. I wish they would just leave that alone now. Um, yeah, it's Joker tough. is good. I can't. I can't see them. You got to think about the money as well. If Matt yeah. Reeves knocks the second, if if this one gets knocked out of the park, which I mean, both the trailers look very, very good, but it could easily, it could easily go the other way. They could be like, Patterson is a shit Batman, and you know the Riddler shouldn't be making lattes, and yeah. Zoe Kravitz isn't a good Catwoman, which I think is going to be awesome. I think it's all going to work out really well. Yeah. But you know when trailers look really good and they mess up, it's typical of like things like the Suicide Squad and stuff, which looked great in the trailer, but it didn't pay off well. The the David Iyer one, not uh, yeah. uh, James, James Gunn one. But I think um, I, I think if if he knocks this one out of the park and then he does a sequel, then there's no way that the studio don't say, look, we all know what's going to make money here. We need Patterson's Batman and we need Bill Billy Kudrup's Joker. Which yeah. should definitely happen. Nice, and uh, and it's just let's just uh, let it happen. But yeah, yeah, it will happen. Yeah, I'm I'm unsure, but I think I think that's what Batman Begins gets so right is that it gives you one villain who's a little bit um, that you could consider the supernatural, like Scarecrow even though there is a perfectly grounded reason to his um, like super villain weight. Yes, methods. Um, you could also, there is an interpretation of him where he's way bigger and way more kind of like, what the fuck? Um, yeah. And I think that's what Batman Begins does really well with its villains, is that it gives you Raz, who they allude to the fact that he's lived forever. Um and they give you the League of Shadows, and then they also give you Scarecrow. They they give you the sort of like two prong attack of two villains who, in the comics, you'd go like, yeah, they're a little bit like they're hard to ground, um, yeah. And they do it so so well. Um, but that I wonder whether the Batman looks at doing something that's similar, where it's like, you'd expect us to do Joker, but we're actually going to do Freeze and Calendar Man. I mean, cal- any of those. I mean, the Rose Gallery is huge, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's coming. It's, in. it's just probably needs to throw like a, you could easily throw a female villain. In there. They could do one. I mean, Harley Quinn's been done to death now, haven't they? But there's plenty of options. But that's just talking about the that thing with Batman Begins as well, and the villains being grounded. Is that with the initial interpretation of Ra's al Ghul that gets killed in Batman Begins? That would be a typical one that we do and be really over the top, like this. You know, I guess Asian character portraying Raz of Ghoul and he's a ninja and he's like blah 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 like so like over the top flips and he's in a Lazarus pit and everything like that but they didn't they made it they made it seem like it just yeah it could it could happen like it could this guy yeah. is just you know he's he wants to he wants to 
destroy cities and start again and he's got this rage in him and he's got this uh, desire to cleanse the world and the same with Scarecrow is that he's just he's just insane or he's not actually insane at the beginning he's just he's just a bit mad and then he goes insane yeah which is cool Um, works really well I really love as well um, where Batman first meets Gordon and he's like baby Bruce or actual actual Bruce like oh, Batman. yeah where he's like in the shadows yeah and he says like you're just one man and then he's like now we're two i really like that piece of dialogue i think that's a smart again like this whole film is littered with like really smart pieces of dialogue but um i like that that it's like he's roped him in on his cause um i like the fact when he tries to escape as well but he doesn't he's shit at getting away yeah it's really good yeah so um yeah, really cool. Uh, how did you feel about the first time you see Batman fighting in this? Because it's the first time we've seen Batman take on quite a few people That's... without being really stiff. I actually think it's really good. I love, I love the fact that he's like jumping over the top of the, the, um, the units. Yeah. Units? What are they called? Containers? Containers. That's the one. Thanks. And... You know, swooping down and he's like behind someone and then he's all this stuff. I think it looks really, really, really nice. Yeah. And he did it really well. And then obviously, yeah, then it gets a bit stiffer as the, the film goes on when he's yeah, he can barely move. But yeah. I actually think all the fight scenes look pretty good in Batman begins. Hmm. He doesn't actually do that much in his suit though, does he, in this? Not a whole time. That's probably I guess the, main... the most that I think you see him go. For. There's a lot of fighting when he's as Bruce Wayne fighting. And um, Raza go in the in Iceland, or not in Iceland, but you know, yeah. in the League of Shadows training. And he obviously fights Raza Ghoul on the train, but again, that's quite yeah. close quarters. But like you said, the the bits with multiple people, that's probably one of the big ones. And I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think it still holds up pretty well. You can tell it's a little bit stiff, like if you compare it to the warehouse scene from Bat Suits, where that just feels like there's no stiffness in terms of him taking on multiple people. But for this because you can see kind of where there's where he still moves and it's like almost one piece um but it still looks really good and i really like how they how he captures falcone and then like leaves him as the signal i think that's a yeah, nice that's visual cool as well um and you also get the i'm batman which is you know just got to be said um just one thing to say about like we're pretty much doing the Batman against and the Batman podcast right now, but <laughs> yeah. it's such a good line in the trailer when they have the bat signal and he's like, it's not, um, it's not a signal for, I can't remember what he says now. It's not a signal. It's a, it's a warning. Or something. It's a warning. Yeah. Yeah. Good Huge. line. Good yeah. line. Robert Patterson. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really like that again. And you've also got the nice coat. So it's sort of like, it gives you, like a big epic moment but then also gives you enough kind of personality to it um, yeah. which I, I like I, I feel like that helps to ground it where it's just like he's not so lost in the moment of ego of I'm Batman and I've just taken out like nine people at the same yeah. time he can kind of be like nice coat um, yeah just thought that was really cool um, what do you think about the tumbler and the bat cave that cave I like. Um, like I really like the waterfalls. Um and I, I like the setup for it as well. Um I think that's cool. The tumbler I think is is cool, but it's not my favorite Batmobile. Um right. got nothing on the Batman returns Batmobile. Yeah, where he's just prowling the streets. Um, he's just Watching people in windows, yeah. <laughs> so subtle. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think that's cool. Um, and it works in the sense of this film. Like, again, you tie it into the fact that it was like built for army purposes. And um, I like, because I like that link about the Tumblr. I like the fact that he's not, he's not gone out and, because obviously you don't know the history of the other Batmobiles. You don't have a clue. Like, they've yeah. just got them. But with this, he's kind of like, look, I need something that stands out. It needs to be heavy duty. It needs to be, like I need to be able to get away, but I also need to be able to do some damage. So I love the fact that it's got a really good explanation like that, which makes perfect sense. Like, you know, Wayne has all these prototype things, Wayne Enterprises, and 
come and see the tumbler. Because he, he's not looking for a vehicle, is he? Either it's like Lucius yeah. walks is like, oh, you want to see the tumbler? And he's like, oh yeah, let's go and look at the tumbler. And it's like, bang. That is the cheesiest line in Batman Begins, though. It does it black. come in black? Yeah, that black. is a popcorn line, which yeah. I, David Goyano should know better. It's like the Man of Steel. Um, I think he's hot, kind of like yeah, just like. Ooh. Um, you do also get as well, just in terms of visual shots. Uh, there's the shot of Batman on the edge of a building, which is yep. like a really quick shot that like it doesn't relate to anything other than it just looks fucking cool. They do um, do those shots several yeah. times, don't they, in the trilogy? Yeah, that's really nice. Um, and also, I love the look of GCPD in this. I feel like it's correct. It's like the sort of yeah, like dark it's kind of Yeah, it's kind of yeah. dingy, dark, yeah. like nothing fancy. It's pretty cool. Yeah, really, really strong. Yeah. Um, one scene that I've absolutely always loved, and I just think it's possibly my favorite scene in the trilogy, um, oh. is the scene where he first meets Scarecrow in the house. It's like really dingy, it's raining, and he sort of bumps into Scarecrow and he gets like oh, yeah. gassed, and then Scarecrow sets him on fire. Which is also, I think, it's a great line. Like, it's a little bit cheesy, but it's also, I like the cockiness. It's the one with, of it. uh, the one with uh, Joffrey from Game of Thrones in it. Yes, exactly. Yes, I did. Little evil time. Joffrey, killing Bastard. Batman. Yeah, just get rid of him. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I like that. I've always liked the you need to lighten up, um, and like, I've I've always liked the visual of him, where he's like on fire and he falls through the narrows, and it's like very grimy and it's he's struggling and the whole like anticipation of him just trying to get back to safety i like seeing that he was in over his head i think but that's i was gonna i've written that down as well but just about that scene but also with the bruises when he wakes up in the morning and he's battered yeah and he's he's doing press-ups and it's like well i've been battered but i'm gonna have to get back on my feet because i've got a purpose and this is my purpose but i love the line you said as well when he says like you need to lighten up that's a good villain line yeah but also Skekra doesn't actually have to do too much to actually beat Batman in that situation because he's such yeah. a rookie in this situation yeah. and his suit is crap because he can't move properly yeah um, but it's that's a really good and it's like the rain and stuff and even even though he's using his silly Batman voice like the crying out for Alfred is kind of like uh, like I am in over my head like holy shit yeah. it's like Alfred's like, what happened? He's like, wow, you wouldn't believe I got set on fire. Like, yeah. Like, we need to stop doing this, Bruce. It's like, no, 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 it's just one night. Like, yeah. tomorrow, it's, it always happens as well. It's like, just as simple as in The Dark Knight when he gets bitten by the dogs and he's just like, fuck, I got bit by dogs now. It's like, yeah, yeah like, we can give you a suit that will protect, protect you from dogs, but if you get stabbed, you're going to go down. It's like, right, got it. Right. Yeah. I won't, I won't get stabbed. I mean, Robert yeah. Patterson's suit looks like it can propel bullets. It's just, Give a shit, did he? That scene shit is was. mega as well. Uh, what happens if he gets shot in the face? I don't know, but I love that. We'll see. Yeah, again, as we talk about the Batman, um, <laughs> <laughs> I love that he just he looks so fucking angry about that whole he thing. Just looks so angry. Yeah, it's like I love, I love that um, emo Batman. That's what everyone's saying, isn't it? Like emo Batman. We don't need him. But, but you, you wouldn't mess with him. Like I would not. There's a couple of shots where I'm just like, he looks like, yeah, he would mess you up. We um, should try it. We'll talk about. We could talk about the trailer on our on our epi- episode next time because yeah, it's going to be uh, all about yeah. DC fandom. But uh, yes, it's hard yes. not to think about it because it's so uh, it's not out yet, and we're linking everything to Christian Bale's Batman. But it is, I, mean, it, I think, uh, yeah, I think because it is tonally, like it looks tonally at similar to Begins more than anything else. I think that's probably why. I think it's easy to draw the comparison because it looks like it's just setting up a Gotham and setting up a world. And um, I think that's the things that Begins does so, so well. Um, I love the look of Arkham as well. Um, yeah, me too. It's, it's done on, I think. so well. Um, I love the, again, Kelly Murphy's performance is just insane, but the bit where he shows uh, Rachel the the like plan like he's just like fuck it, this is it um and then he's just like you know you should try some medicine i think that's really nice 
Um, I like that bit as well because he lets her run away and he's just like, ah, like she's not going to get anywhere. I've got plenty of time yeah. to get my mask on. And then, because that was in the trailer, the mm. the smoke, uh, the gas coming out. And that's why I think most of them, I thought he's going to progress to be the, I think I thought he would progress to be the main villain. Whoever he was working for, he would realize that, hey, like I am the one. I'm, I'm actually pulling the strings here, not you. Like you're yeah. bankrolling me so I can take over the city. But yeah. Which is a shame as well. It's a shame a little bit that you didn't get that sort of Batman versus Scarecrow bit. Yeah. I guess it wouldn't have been much of a fight. Um, no. Um, still, it, would been, I, it would have been nice. Good to see Crane use his like, brains against Batman's brawn, I guess. Yeah. I do really like the scene of um, where he gives him his own like gas. Um, and then you see yeah. Batman as like really demonic. Yeah. That to me, I've, I've sort of noted that. And also the bat scene where there's like all the bats coming around and he goes down the hallway. Awesome. That's scene. awesome as well. But those two feel, um, they're like the least Nolan thing, I think, in the film. In that they're like the two things that aren't super grounded. Um, like the idea of the bats in terms of like so many of them just coming straight for the same area and the demonic sort of look, I feel like Nolan hasn't really explored that sort of like um, that same visual in any of his other films. Um, yeah. I feel like they're, and they they're the superhero really bits, aren't they? The, yeah. the bat thing is very like, uh, yeah, you'd expect it in another kind of superhero film, but it still looks good though. I mean, yeah, I, I think, think he's like, allowed to get away with a few of those moments, but they don't, yeah, I don't feel. I, I think I actually still really like the bat thing. So maybe I've just I, I like I love over it. I think they're like awesome, but it, I just noticed it when I was watching it. I was like, that it's interesting how he starts off with this sort of like these more comic book nuances and this, and then by the time you get into Dark Knight, they're sort of gone a little bit. Like the those kind of like theatricals are gone. Um, and yeah, I just I, I really like both of those things. I think. They're done really nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, what else do I have on my list? Oh, um, this is sort of getting into the final act now. Yeah. The, which I mentioned earlier, the subtle hint that Ra's al Ghul is like immortal, that they throw it in just like a line where he's like, is Ra's al Ghul immortal? I think that's a great line because it's like the comic fans, you're like, he fucking is. But to yeah. everybody else, it, it, it can just be read as like a, oh, that's nice because he's he's tricked him. Um, yeah, I, I really like the the kind of layer of that piece of dialogue. I think that's good. I like the fact as well that he when he's on the train, obviously he's, Batman doesn't save him. I like the fact that he kind of closes his eyes and you don't yeah. see him. You don't you don't see anything more of him then because it's just kind of like you have no idea. You don't know if he's gone, if he's okay, if he's dead, if he's um because yeah. he kind of looks like he accepts it straight away. He's in like. This is going to really fucking hurt, but yeah. I'll be back. Obviously, yeah. he's not back physically, but he is spiritually. Yes. I um, guess. And I like as well that he he leaves Bruce for dead and he's like, justice is balanced. Yes. And I think cool. that's done fucking so well as well. Um, it's really well written, isn't it? I think, I mean, to be fair, I think all three of them are, are well written. Like I said, yeah. just the third one loses its way a little bit, but that's really good. I love, I love, I mean, this is right at the cusp of the end now, but I love the tease as well. I think that's so well done with Joker. I think that's so just, good. I just remember seeing that and thinking that is the way you tease a character, even if he was never even going to be in the second one, even if he came further down the line, but that is such a, such, such a good tease. And the, the setup for it as well, that it's just like, you know, we buy, um, armor so they buy armor piercing rounds you dress up as a, a bat and it's sort of like you got this guy yeah it's like cause and effect I really like that because that is batman through and through is that it's just like the more that he does the more that villains become more theatrical and more kind of daring um yeah i think that's really nice um what other things to pick up on um oh classic scene where he says it's not who i am underneath but what i do that defines me again awesome piece of dialogue and that scene then where he like glides over the narrows and people see him as like evil. so cool i love that 
Uh, because I read as well that they said there, were, there was a, something about that as well, that this, this Batman was interpreted as in that people don't actually like him. Hmm. There, are, there isn't a lot of people like clamoring to be like, oh, thanks, Batman, and stuff. So the first, first sign of trouble in the Narrows, even though they're all a bit hypnotized or drugged, is that they all just start trying to beat him up. Like, yeah. like uh, which was quite a cool... There was a there was an article I read on the whole thing, just the the way it is that it's so different to any other version of a superhero before that because he's he's trying his best to help people, but they actually Yeah, just like, he's, he's barely scratching the surface on helping Gotham at this point. So there's yeah. no reason to to care for him. Yeah. So he's, they do that really well as well, where it's just um he's like and that's that's the Joker setup, is that it's just how much does he help and how much does he cause a problem yeah um, like does he cause animosity between people and i do really like that i like that that's the angle they went for him um do you th- he ki- like i know people always argue this but he indirectly kills raz al Ghul. i know people always no. argue that, like come on surely no he just I, uh, just doesn't save him but is that not indirectly killing well, if you're on a train, right? Yeah. And you and you pull the the gears out so that train can't stop. Yeah. Then you're, you know, you're going to kill yourself. Whereas if um cuz Razo the one who destroys the engine, doesn't he? Fighting him. Or the the gear, the stick that you use to stop and start it. I suppose, yeah. Bruce Wayne doesn't do it. Bruce Wayne's like, "You know what?" Yeah, he's gonna pull this out. So Raz Al Ghul makes his own bed, doesn't he? And he has to lie in it. That's the that's the I thing guess. Batman's trying to say. He's kind of like, look, you've set this train in motion. I have a choice here. You can be on the train, or I can save you. Yeah, and he's like, you know what? I don't have to save you. Yeah, and then it's up to him. He's got a few seconds to save himself, but he doesn't. He closes his eyes. I mean, there's not a lot he could do, is there? <laughs> like, Bat- Batman's got a. Uh, Got wings. He can glide he could away. Go, he could go back in time and not be a bad boy. Yeah, this is true. Hi. Yeah, I still fall on the fact that I think he he indirectly kills him. Um, but I think I think there's probably in, in, I always looked at it as there's a bit of it thinks that he knows he's probably not going to die. Like he just thinks he'll be back. Like there's a. I mean, he could have. Well. He could have saved him, couldn't he? But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I've never looked at it that he's killed Raz al Ghul. I've just looked at it as in like he, he's, he's leaving Raz al Ghul in his own mess. It's up to him to save himself. Save himself, yeah. Just... Um, lastly then, unless there's anything else you want to jump off of that. But, no, go for it. Um, the, like one of the visuals that I absolutely always loved and I, I just I wish there was a bit more of it is Scarecrow on the horse. So good. Like he just looks so menacing and like really accurate to the comics. And he, well, that's it, just, isn't it? They've yeah. done it. They've done it without putting all the straw in his collar and stuff. They've just made him look like a scarecrow from the comics. Yeah. But um, without actually having to do it properly, which is so smart. Yeah, so smart. And he evolves as well because, like, by the time you meet him in Rises, am I right in saying in Rises he's got feathers? Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's all he's got like he's just a mess, isn't he? But he yeah. looks like yeah, you know, he's more fluffy. Yeah, like yeah, uh, proper scarecrow. The only thing yeah. he's missing with this straw hat. He's Mr. great in that. He's he's really good in Rises. I remember seeing him at the cinema, and I remember thinking, I know he's in it, but where's he going to be? And he was like high pitched voiced judge. Yeah, it was uh, really good. Yeah, so well done. Um, there's still room. Matt Reeves could do the full on scarecrow in the Batman. He could do, couldn't he? Yes, he's got loads of things. He was saying this about the things like the Spider-Man 2 game and stuff with Craven the Hunter. Like with Spider-Man and Batman, their rogues gallery is so yeah, so good so that there's so many different versions of the characters, but you could just do anything and you can make them new. If you get the right actor or actress in the role, then you know you think like Poison Ivy hasn't been done properly since Uma Thurman's one. And that yeah. could be a really, really good role as well. Although obviously it's about yeah. there with the plants and stuff, but there's, there's loads of opportunities. Yeah. Even with Bane again. I mean, Bane has been done twice, you know, multiple, multiple ways as well. So there's loads of, loads of things. All right. Cool. That was pretty fun. Dark Knight next. Yes. All right. Curious. 
with Harry as well we should point out with Harry oh yeah the return of Harry Hughes yeah excellent times Thank now you. now I'm looking forward to it <laughs> good <laughs> alright well that is the end of this in-depth episode for Batman Begins uh, if you want to hear more from Nick and I you can find us on social media Twitter and Instagram at Consistently Pod and on YouTube by simply searching for Consistently OK Podcast we stream on all podcast services each episode coming out on Wednesdays if you're an Apple Podcast subscriber, you can get extra content. You can also now as well, we have a newsletter. The Consistently and we have okay a newsletter, newsletter. yes. So, the Consistently OK newsletter, yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants to sign up to that, you will see it on our Twitter. Um, it's in our link in the bio. Yeah, so, so join that, read about us. It's basically just some uh, text chains between Nick and myself, which is where the podcast really originated from. We just, yeah. just talk all kinds of stuff on text and then it led to this. So our next episode is going to be just our standard monthly episode where we talk about all things pop culture related. So we're going to cover DC Fandom amongst other things. So join us for that in a couple of weeks' time. Cool. All right, dude. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, dude. Yeah, you too. All right. Catch you a bit. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.